Hello, we begin our notes with chapter one, first peoples, first farmers, most of history in a single chapter to 4000 BCE, section one, out of Africa to the ends of the earth, first migrations, and for those of you unfamiliar with the acronym BCE, it stands for Before Common Era, formerly known as BC, when you're writing your notes, it's important that you indicate the chapter and the section and you at least write down the section title and then as you'll go as we go through you'll notice that each section has a subsection which will be at the top of the slide and you'll need to write that down as well that way as you navigate through your notes at a later time it's easy to find information okay here we go Okay, I want you to look at this picture, or this painting. What do you see in this painting? What creatures, what people, what particular actions? Really, this looks like maybe three hunters with a herd of grazing animals. It shows, you know, it looks like maybe some of them might be running. Uh, I see a young one. And one with an arrow. It might be this one, maybe. It's a very interesting picture. All that, these three rather tall figures. And they seem extremely tall in relation to the size of the animals. Let's see if any of you guys notice that. They're carrying bows and arrows. Looks like each one of them. So they're probably hunters. And I don't really see, I don't know, maybe do we see anything else? You know, I mentioned earlier the figures seem rather tall for the size of the animals. Um, and that, I mean, that's a really strange proportion. So why do you think um, they chose to paint um, the scene in these proportions? Right? They have these long, strong legs, very long, lean torsos. Um, it looks like they're not wearing much clothing except for these belts. Um, you know, they're towering over the animals. You could see it that way. Um, you know, their, their proportions make it, um, you know, uh, easier to recognize than the hunters because of their proportions. And you know the length of their arms seem rather strange for the length of their torso and their legs. I don't know if any of you noticed that. Um, this, this outsized representation of these hunters might be intended to suggest some type of a dominance over the herd of animals. Or even to stress their mastery over their prey. Uh, with these hunting skills, or could it just be to simply overemphasize their physical attributes, um, which are obviously important for rather accomplished hunters. And so, why? And the next thing I want you to think about is why do you think this painting was created? Um, chances are that only the hunters themselves uh, would have witnessed a hunt like this. So this might have been an effort by their group to maybe share this experience with some of their others in their tribe or their families. And you know, given the importance of hunting for the subsistence and health of a family and even a small community, um, the painting may have also been a way to celebrate or even honor the hunters. 
this is also, if you think about it, it might be considered a way um, of communicating hunting skills to future generations. So just a few things to think about. Okay, out of Africa to the ends of the earth, first migration. Okay, Homo sapiens emerged in eastern and southern Africa approximately 250,000 years ago. Um, they stayed there exclusively for about 150,000 years. Africa was home to what many historians call the human revolution. And this is um, where culture became more important than biology uh, in shaping human behavior. Before that, um, biology, which means um, you know, the, the physical makeup and the anatomy of people, shaped human behavior. But with this human revolution in Africa, uh, culture or um, a people's way of life became more important. Humans began to inhabit environments not touched by earlier hominids. Um, and even technological innovation, like the use of stone and bone tools, uh, became very important. Uh, hunting and fishing, not necessarily just scavenging or gathering food. Um, and there were also some patterns of exchange. They used ornaments. Even it's possible that they developed planned burials. And the earliest evidence um, is in the Blombos Caves of South Africa. And this is CA, which means which is short for circa, which also means about or around uh, 100,000 uh, years ago. It looks like I left that off, but it's 100,000 years ago. Now, between 100,000 to 60,000 years ago, that was the beginning of migrations out of Africa. And these people adapted to nearly every environment on Earth. And much of this took place in the difficulties of the last Ice Age. Now, these migrations um, that started about 45,000 years ago there's a series of migrations out of Africa and even parts of the Middle East that eventually populated Asia and Europe. Now, the migrations from around 20,000 years ago, um, it was much colder as the Ice Age temperatures moved humans from northern Europe towards the south and even uh, brought new hunting tools. And these hun new hunting tools is... Um, also traveled with humans as they moved southwards. There, or the, excuse me, then humans developed spears and bows and arrows and stone tools to hunt larger game. And you saw um, in the slide before cave paintings. Uh, and this is really the earliest existing records um, that archaeologists have found of the, or that's a representation of human communication. And most of them are animal and human forms, but even also some abstract symbols. Uh, sorry, I didn't switch the slide over um, as I, when I was talking about migration into the Middle East about 45,000 years ago. <clears throat> But the best evidence of these, uh, of or excuse me, of early European settlement comes from uh, southern France and northern Spain, and that's where the previous slides uh, painting came from. I believe that's in southern. That one I think is in southern France. Um, the settlers in northern Europe, like I said, were pushed southward. Right to warmer areas, um, and that's what I was talking about just a second ago with these new hunting ideas or habits, technologies. Those traveled with them. Now, the earliest Europeans um, left hundreds of these cave paintings, 
I mean, like, like I said, most of them were animal or uh, human forms, and even some abstract symbols or designs. Um, and historians, as they've studied these and you know thoroughly communicated with archaeologists and anthropologists, are not quite 100% sure on what all of those abstract designs represent. Um, hence, abstract. Now, some of the new technologies um, that developed in the Ukraine and Russia uh, were needles, multi-layered clothing, which of course is necessary for the colder weather, uh, weaving, the use of nets, especially for fishing, uh, storage pits. Uh, they realized and eventually discovered that some food items could be stored and would last um, a long time, and so they needed um, a way or a method to store those, and so they used storage pits. Um, even baskets and pottery to help with the storage of those goods. Now there are some partially underground dwellings um, that they've seen from mammoth remains there in the parts of the Ukraine and Russia. And um, there's also some a suggestion of some semi-permanent settlement. Now this is really the time during uh, during the time when people spent most of their time hunting and gathering. I'm not staying in one place, even fishing. Um, you know, the discovery of agriculture hasn't happened yet, and so civilizations really haven't formed. But there is some um, suggestion of semi-permanent settlements, or at least maybe these groups or bands would come back and return to some of the same places. And they've also found um, the creation of what they call, or what here historians call Venus figurines, and they are these female figurines. And the earliest one's been dated to at least 35,000 years ago. And it's, uh, I believe there are some images in your book, but it's a short, um, plump female figure. Um, some, most of them have uh, the heads, but not all of them have the arms. Some have the arms. Of course, the, most of them have the legs there. But really, the ones that are uh, pictured have are really full-figured uh, females. And many historians believe that's for the idea of life, because women um, are the ones that give birth. And so that's where that idea comes from, and, and maybe even the size of the, or in the shape of how those female figurines were uh, created. And as you'll notice, the subsection um, is into Eurasia, right out of Africa, and we started with into Eurasia. Now the next place that humans migrated to out of Africa that we'll look at now is Australia. So into Australia is our next section. Um, humans reached Australia roughly 60,000 years ago from Indonesia and if you're not sure where Indonesia is you can go to Google Maps and search Indonesia but it's this huge area of Oceania hopefully you remember from geography last year but it's this huge area in Oceania made up of thousands of islands and so uh, they believe that those that reached Australia which eventually became the Aborigines uh, came from Indonesia um, but the settlement in Australia was very sparse, um, which means it was spread out. And by the time Europeans arrived in 1788, they estimated that there were only about 300,000 people um, in Australia. But despite only having 300,000 people in a huge landmass, um, there developed about 250 languages, which is a large amount for the number of people. Um, and the people of Australia um, were completely a hunting and gathering society. Um, even when Europeans arrived, 
1788. This was their this is their economy. It's hunting and gathering. Um, and the people there had a complex worldview, how they viewed the world or their surroundings, and it's what historians call dream time. Um, there are stories, ceremonies, um, and they've even found art that told of their ancestral beings. Um, everything in the natural order is essentially an echo of ancient happenings. And they also believed that current people are intimately related to places and events in the past. So what's happening and the people that you know, exist in the present are, you know, when I say intimately, they're um, very closely related to the people and events of the past. And they had major communication and exchange networks. Um, this included... Uh, the use of some stones, even pigments or coloring, uh, wood, paturi, which is a psychoactive drug, and they found evidence of songs and dances and stories and rituals, like which, like I said, goes back up to um, these stories and ceremonies and even art. And so that's Australia. And this is a great map. This map shows, um, well, first of all, the ice sheets about 20,000 years ago. Obviously, Antarctica is covered. Uh, if you'll notice, all of northern Europe, parts of um, northern Asia, and even here in western China and some of central Asia, and that's because of the higher elevation. Essentially, all of what is now Canada and Greenland, and even um, down into parts of the United States. Covered in ice about 20,000 years ago. And you'll also notice the land bridges that existed at about the same time, and that's because those ice sheets hadn't melted. Um, as you know of now, um, when these ice sheets melted, it created, you know, bodies of water get larger, and it covered um, huge areas of land. And so, like, for example, here, where the Black Sea is located, um, where you see that green, that's all water now. Um, but these blue arrows show the direction of human migration or expansion. And they give us some dates. Right? of uh, the human occupation, or about the time they arrived. And some of these dates, especially into Northern America and South America, those are still heavily debated amongst historians. But there is evidence uh, for this part of the world. So this is a great map. Like I said, it shows you the direction of human expansion and where those ice sheets and land bridges were that allowed them to even uh, make that um, make that trek, those journeys, over very large distances. Okay, next we're going to the Americas. Uh, so like I said, historians still argue, it's still heavily debated, on when the, the settlement of the Americas began. But it is commonly agreed upon that it was somewhere between 30,000 and 15,000 years ago. Which, you know, some of you might think, well, that's not, you know, 15, 30, that's not too far off. But if you look at it in, in terms of thousands, now you're talking a difference between 15,000 years. So it is still a rather large range um, for when people crossed uh, Beringia, which you should have learned about in geography. Uh, that's the land bridge from Asia over to North America. Um, and that was really, that, I mean, that's their mode of migration, the Bering Strait, or Beringia. Um, and they also traveled by sea down the west coast of North America. 
Um, but that's also still heavily debated about. Um, they also argue over how many migrations there were and how long it took uh, those people to travel down the northern, and, or excuse me, down North America and all the way into South America. But there is evidence of human activity in southern Chile around 12,500 years ago. And, I, you know, that's really how they came, I think, how they came up with that 30,000 to 15,000 uh, range. Now, Clovis. Uh, this is the first clearly defined and widespread culture of the Americas. And they gave it this name because of the Clovis point, which is a projectile point. And it flourished uh, briefly around 13,000 years ago. And they hunted large mammals like mammoths and bison. Uh, but they disappeared, it seems, at the same time as the extinction, extinction of a large number of um, mammals. And the next stage of um, migration, um, it's a greater cultural diversity and people really had to adapt um, at the end of the last ice age and they did it rather differently. And they adapted in different ways. Um, and this, go back up to this Clovis point. Um, this Clovis point, really, it's kind of found all over North America. Um, and it, but um, is significantly um, important because it was really used by the Clovis people to hunt those large animals. But, um, you know, with the dis disappearance of the Clovis culture um, that was simultaneous with the extinction of large mammals, it's still unclear why those extinctions happened. Um, it could have been anything from overhunting to weather changes, but the Clovis culture disappeared just like those animals did. So that's a good indication that those mammals were a large part of the Clovis culture's survival. <laughs> um, but like I said, there's this, there's also this diversification of lifestyle. And after the extinction of the megafauna, which are large animals, uh, humans had to adapt to various ecological niches. Right? Some remained mobile foragers. Right? They continued more moving about and foraged and hunted, and eventually others developed agriculture and began the process of developing civilizations and urbanizing. And so they adapted uh, differently. Okay, into the Pacific. Uh, the last phase of the Great Human Migration started uh, circa 3,500 years ago uh, into the Pacific. And this migration by water uh, really begins from the Bismarck and Solomon Islands, as well as the Philippines. Um, again, if you're not sure where these are located, um, I would like you know I'd like you to take take it upon yourselves to do your own research uh, to find where those are. And this was actually, you know, the areas of the Pacific. Um, their migration is rather quick over such long distances. And these migrants spoke um, what's known as Austronesian languages. And that's actually traced to southern China. But they're all part of uh, one language family, Austronesian. And they settled every habitable area of the Pacific Basin within 2,500 years, which is rather incredible based, you know, when you look at the size. So that's, that's really neat. And they inhabited all the areas that humans could uh, inhabit in 2,500 years. And we're talking, I mean, think about how long ago that was, right? 
no motors, no electric anything. This is about 3,500 years ago, which is roughly 1500 BCE. So that that's pretty amazing. Um, and you know, with this um, time frame of about 2,500 years, um, they also settled um, Madagascar, which are, most of you hopefully know who that is, not just because of the movie, um, but because you know where it is from geography. It's that large island off of the southeastern coast of Africa. Um, and that, because of their migrations of where these people um, went all over the Pacific, that it really made um, Austronesian the most widespread language family. And the the initial compl or the completion of the initial human settlement of the entire world um, was about 1,000 to 1,300 CE. Uh, this would be the CE is common era, which is our current time, and that was with the occupation of Z New Zealand. So New Zealand was the last place uh, for human settlement. These Pacific settlers, uh, they actually when they traveled, they took agriculture with them, so they spread the idea of agriculture, unlike some of the other migrants, and apparently they actually followed a deliberate colonization plan, um, that's noticed in a lot of the artifacts and any of the record keeping that's been kept or been left, and they even created highly stratified societies or chiefdoms, and a great example of that. Um, are the natives of Hawaii. Um, and they, these migrants actually had a massive environmental impact on previously uninhabited lands. You know, we're talking about locations that had never, ever uh, had humans. And so that can uh, leave a massive environmental impact. Hopefully you look and found where Bismarck and the Solomon Islands are. Uh, it's near New Guinea. Um, and like I said, they you know they traveled all over the Pacific, from Indonesia, went east to Madagascar, in the Indian Ocean, which shows exceptional seamanship and navigational skills. Um, and like I said, unlike other migrations, they there's an evidence of intentional colonization of these new lands. Um, it's done by these agricultural people with the intention of finding new lands and creating new communities. Um, like I said, they developed the, these highly stratified societies or chiefdoms. And like I was talking about, the massive environmental impact on these previously uninhabited lands. You know, humans change their environment. They had, and they also, you know, they adapt to their environment and they can adapt the environment to how they live based on, you know, on their survival. survival. And that led to a lot of um, extinctions of different flora and fauna or plants and animals. Okay, that sums up the end of out of Africa and where these human migrations took place and when. Um, I would like to look at this last map and this is the map of um, in the Pacific. Like we like I was talking about earlier. So you, you can see this is a huge area. Indonesia, and there's the Philippines up there. And, you know, Micronesia and Polynesia and Melanesia, that's these areas and islands that um, we know them as now. Um, of course, here's Madagascar, that island off the southeastern coast of Africa, like I was talking about earlier. But this area that's shaded in this darker blue, that's the um, extent of the Austronesian speaking people. So, that is a widespread um, language.
And, of course, the red arrows show where they migrated to. And it's nice because it gives you um, the dates of probably when these migrations took place. And, of course, it shows you at the end, um, New Zealand, about 1300 uh, CE. Okay. All right. I will see you again for section.